Islamica, brought to you by Labara Mobile. يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم عله ويوجا الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد خاتم النبيين وإمام المرسلين وقائد الغر المحجلين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته أجمعين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Praise is due only to Allah, the master of the worlds Prayers and salutations on the seal of all prophets, the final of all messengers, the best of mankind, who is sent but as mercy to the worlds, our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and upon his blessed pure family and all his companions and their good followers. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all watching, listening in the UK and around the world I have been given this great opportunity to speak to you and answer your questions or some of your questions in as much as uh, this time allows. I would like to thank in the beginning the administration, the staff in Islam Channel for this IQ session and giving me this opportunity to communicate with the viewers and the listeners Muslims and non-Muslims alike, we welcome all questions, inshallah, of all types. If uh, we just uh, seek knowledge and try to uh, stick to the most important issues which unite Muslims all together, inshallah, may Allah bless you all. Brothers and sisters, uh, there is no need to stress on the importance of seeking knowledge. And uh, putting a question is half knowledge because knowledge is between a question and an answer. Questions, brothers and sisters, are like keys. And uh, you won't be able to increase your knowledge or to get uh, an answer to a certain problem unless you have the key, you ask people. One important rule in asking questions is not to be shy. That is to say, some people are arrogant and out of embarrassment or uh, arrogance, they don't uh, pose questions. And this is wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged us in Al-Quran Al-Kareem when he says in Surah Al-Anbiya, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask people of knowledge if ye do not know. And dhikr here means knowledge. It is one word used for various meanings. And these meanings, for example, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, invocation of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikr means Al-Quran Al-Kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. We are the one who indeed revealed the dhikr, the Qur'an, that is to say, and we are indeed the ones who are going to protect it. Dhikr means al-jumu'ah prayer, Friday prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu idha nudiya lissalati min yawmi al-jumu'ati fassa'aw ila dhikrillah wa dharu al-bay'i. O ye who believe when it is called for Jumu'ah prayer, إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ So rush to the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rush to Friday prayer. Here in, the, in this very instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, orders us, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ Ask people of remembrance. The ulama say remembrance, knowledge here. And the reason the word of knowledge is not used here because remembrance means practice of this knowledge. So that when you remember this knowledge in time of need, you practice it. And that's the most important element or fruit of knowledge. 
you don't have the fruit of knowledge if you do not practice it. The first benefit of any type of knowledge is to uh, practice it. And of course, uh, second would be transmitting this knowledge to other people. And this is the job of the people of remembrance, people of knowledge. I think we have uh, someone calling in. Uh, please, can you uh, put the call? Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome. Ahla wa sahlam. Shukran. Uh, actually, Sheikh, I would like to ask how how do you know is uh, uh, that Allah is angry with you? And secondly, to whom Allah does give azab in nowadays? You know, I'm talking as an individual. Uh, to wh to whom Allah gives azab? Ah. Uh? Azab. I'm not no. sure about the word, please. Azab, azab. Azab, all right, okay, punishment. Yeah. And now, okay. in this day and age, you know, to an individual, not a nation. All right. All right, Jazakallah. Barakallahu feekum. So the first question, when would you know Allah is angry with you? And uh, the brothers and sisters, this is a very important question. Because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are sure we love him. But sometimes we are unsure whether he loves us or not. And we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often, but we don't know whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with us, is pleased with us. And sometimes uh, people think that uh, uh, Allah is angry with them, they are unsure, they do something wrong. Let me give you the following examples. Someone might fall into a sin and then repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means leaving the sin and then coming back to remorse and to cut all ties with all surroundings uh, of the sin. This is the real tawbah and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Now if you feel that uh, this tawbah, this repentance produced for you a new act of worship or a new state of the heart, awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more fear, motivating you to more ibadah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not angry with you after the sin because of the true tawbah which you did. Now there are people who commit sins and after committing sins, instead of doing tawbah, they try to justify these, these sins for themselves. And of course, Starting to justify means that you're changing, distorting uh, the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only disobeying, but uh, rather here challenging the instructions, injunctions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is quite wrong. Now, the results might not be the same. If you measure the anger and uh, the uh, pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether Allah is pleased with you or angry with you by what he gives you, then you're taking the wrong uh, measure here. And uh, I would like to highlight the following facts. Brothers and sisters, never take the dunya, wealth or jobs or beauty or health as signs of Allah being happy or unhappy with you. This is very important. And a lot of people get uh, this uh, idea wrong. They think by getting what they want of this dunya, money or jobs or whatever they ask for, Allah is happy with them. No. Because Allah gives all people the rizq. And this dunya is worthless than a wing of a fly, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells us. And Allah set examples for us of the whole dunya like... Uh, an example of a fly, Inna Allah la yastahi an yadriba mathalan ma ba'udatan fama fawqaha. 